How are we going, everybody? Uh, came outside to have a look at the garden. At the moment now that we're about to film, it's around three o'clock. So if you're watching this at any other time of the day, just think about how hot it can be at three o'clock. Stinking hot, 29 degrees at the moment. We've got a little bit of a northerly breeze coming through. It hasn't, it's just stopped down a little bit now. Well, it's just slowed down a little bit now. And I'm gonna come out and water a couple of plants. This is the time where you should avoid watering but I know I've got a couple of young ones in here that need that extra little bit of hydration because the grounds do dry up really quick. I did mention in the past about when you turn your tap on or your hose on, see I've got the watering wand here, but this hose has been laying out in the sun here all day, so it's copying all the wonderful heat rays that we have coming from the sun, or the sun rays that, that is, heating up the pipe so the water inside is boiling hot. I know many of you know hot water systems run like this as well. Even uh, pools sometimes they run their water through a pipeline to heat it up and pump it back into the pools. If I turn this on now, that is hot. That's actually stinking hot. That's um, going to burn the grass there. You need to run it through. Geez, look how long. How long is this going to take now? Watch. Oh, it's too hot. You've got to let the water run through. If you turned your tap on like this now and went straight onto your plants, the little young ones, you'll scorch them. I'm not too worried about the grass here. It's tough as nails. It's, it's just starting to cool down now. Don't know how long that's been, 10, 15 seconds. All right, it's cool, it's cool. It's nice and cold now. Sometimes it's good to wait just a little bit longer because sometimes you'll get a little flush of hot water. That's it. Now, when you go and water your plants on a hot day, if you don't need to wet the plant, do not wet it. This is the beautiful thing about these watering ones. You can get it nice and close to the root zone like that and avoid wetting the foliage. But do hydrate your mulch. If you've got a drip system, perfect. It hydrates the soil, but the mulch on top also needs to be hydrated. You can see what I'm doing here. See the mulch? Okay, look at that. It's just like straw paper now. It's really light and fluffy. It got watered in the morning but we get a lot of high winds and it makes it difficult. This is now slightly moist. I'll hold it here for about, what, five seconds? One, two, three, four, five. It's moist underneath, beautiful. And that's got a little bit of body in it too by comparison to the stuff next door. That's what you've got to do, avoid wetting the leaves. But there are circumstances where your plant is so dehydrated that you need to hydrate the soil and the plant itself. If you've got shade cloth or netting as I have over there, that's reducing the sunlight factor by 15, maybe 20%. You can get shade cloth that does it from 30 to 50 to 70% shade. 70 is excessive, up to 50 is enough. But if you have got shade cloth up, any sort of shade cloth or bird netting, then that gives you the opportunity to be able to wet the leaves and hydrate it without the fear of burning it. But there's another thing you've got to practice. First is mulching, which is what I haven't done here. And second is when you do wet the leaves of a plant, and you can see these are the tomato plants that I planted as cuttings. No roots on them at all, but you can see it's still holding itself up. Yes, the leaf has wilted. I'm pointing at the leaf down here but the stem itself has still got some structural integrity, which means it's holding a little bit of moisture in there, enough to keep it alive. These leaves, if it wasn't hydrated, these leaves by now, three or four days later, would have completely dried out and turned into basically rice paper. So in this circumstance here, if you need to, and it's always better to put a bit of shade cloth over, but I'm gonna take the risk here and do it without, you can hydrate around and wet the plant, but don't just wet it a little bit like that. Let it soak in. We're waiting, we're waiting. See it now soaking in down now? That's going down where we need it to be. So once it's done that, go over it again, lightly. And I'm basically trying to cool down not only the soil, but the plant as well. I'm not gonna wet all the other plants because they're nice and vibrant, strong and healthy looking. So they don't need to be hydrated like that. Now,
Now, in the past, I've said about hot houses, you know, you've got seed trays, heat mats, you put your seeds in there, you've got cold water going into a seed tray that's heated and it's cooling down the soil, so it fluctuates the soil temperature. In that circumstance there, we're sowing seeds out of season, we've got a heat mat on, the soil temperature needs to be constant around 18 degrees and above, a little bit above, so that it can germinate efficiently and effectively. When you do cool that down in that environment, yes, it does slow down the, the germination rate. In this case here, we're out in 29 degrees, 30 degrees weather, in this corner it feels like about 40 at the moment, and these plants have got no mulch around them, you can see they're holding themselves up. We've got the beans there, we've got a few spring onions and some chilli plants that I've planted. That one there's got a little bit of burning on the edges of the leaves. That tells me that it needs to be hydrated. I'm not gonna wet the leaves because it's still sitting upright, it hasn't wilted, but I'm gonna hydrate the soil. Now, when you hydrate the soil, I said it the other day, I think, don't do this. You remember that sponge effect that we're talking about? If you don't wet all this area, and I have wet this area in the, in the morning that is, it should be wet. Look, it is wet underneath. It's not dry, it's dry on top. This is what the sun does. It dries the surface up, it crusts over. It does go hard. If I let this be like this for too long, meaning many days, eventually that'll crust over and it won't allow the air or the water to penetrate through. Hydrating it regularly everywhere is vital for the survival of your plants and keeping a balanced soil temperature. And you don't need your soil to be 30, 40 or 50 degrees. It just cooks and boils everything. See, I'm back here again. Just gonna give this a little helping hand. There you go. You'll be right. Now, I should put a little cloche over, a little bit of shade cloth over the top to protect it. But I preach more than I practice. You know that by now. Haven't you learned that yet? I let them struggle a little bit. That'll come good, they will come good. That spring onion's not looking too good, but everything else has to be hydrated. So you can't not, you can't just hydrate one little area and not the other, because it'll absorb the moisture, it'll dry out, and this part will be a lot hotter than that part there. So don't hydrate just around the plants like that. Wet the entire garden bed, activate it. What makes a healthy garden bed? compost, air, carbon, nitrogen, and water. Water activates it all. You don't have the moisture in it, you can add as much manure and as much compost and carbon you want into it, but it'll all just sit there if there's no moisture content at all. A little bit okay, it'll break down, but more the better, but not too soggy because you can go the extreme too, folks. So you can see how I'm working around my plants. If there's anything you gotta buy this Christmas for this summer, is a bloody watering wand, folks. Those hand trigger ones that you spray around like that, or they've got those long streams on them, they're great for washing concrete. So for the Italians and Greeks out there, get those, with the jet sprays. But for those who want to really take care about watering their garden and being cautious, this is how we water. And you'll see the same with all nursery men and women who work out with the pot plants and the fields. They all use watering wands. So, hydrate your garden, keep your plants well hydrated and wet the entire garden bed. Provide a bit of cover and shade if they need it, just that extra protection just to get them through those few hot days that we have. And mulch, so important to mulch. And I haven't done it yet, but I'm keeping it hydrated and I will get it mulched up very shortly. So it's only gonna be a matter of hours, if not a couple of days before these, gar these garden bits are complete. And we've got our staggered planting. So check out our website as well, vasiliesgarden.com. Great specials are running all day, every day of the year. Uh, and if you wanna take advantage of our wholesale rates, become a subscriber to our magazine, you become a VOP automatically and you get access to our online page, which gives you, which gives you all the discounted rates. It's vasiliesgarden.com. From Eva Silly, Maresi.